Please remain standing. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Let us pray. O God, the creator and the preserver of all mankind, we pray for people of every race and in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving presence among all nations. Especially we thank you for the countries of the Caribbean who, through your goodness, can celebrate emancipation at this time. Help us always to use our freedom, not to do as we like, but to love and to serve you and our fellow men and women. Be a God of mercy. As we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Embry Christina disaster, come to close to those who still mourn and comfort them in the assurance of your love that never dies. Bless them in the happy memories of the past with those who they love but see no more. Give them strength in all that is to come with trust in the resurrection that gives them union now and forever with those they have loved. O oh God, Father of all comfort and God of all grace, bless those who, whose dear ones have been killed in this tragedy and those whose dear ones have lost their lives in seeking to save the lives of others. Although some may forget this disaster, we ask you in your love always to remember those who will never forget because life for them will never be the same again. Father God, we also ask your guidance and protection and all captains pilots, crew members, and all who travel by sea, air, and land. Take them and us into your care and protection always, so that we may have safe journeys to and fro. Help all captains to be alert and wise in their duties, and to be courageous in times of crisis. Protect all seafarers from the dangers and perils of the sea, and grant them peace and comfort in every storm. O Lord, our God, from whom neither life nor death can separate those who trust in your love, and whose love holds in its embrace thy children in this world and in the next, and so unite us to you, and in that fellowship with you, where we may always be united to our loved ones, whether here or there, and give us courage, faith, and hope, knowing you hold all things in your hands. And so we commit this memorial service into your most capable hands. May all we do be done to your honor and your glory. And may this service bring a source of comfort to grieving hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Archibald, and you may now be seated. Your Honor, Mrs. Hailita M. Liber, OBE, MH. Deputy Governor General and Mr. Elmo Liberd, MH. The Honorable Mark A. G. Brantley, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Civil Aviation in the Government of St. Christopher and Nevis and Premier of Nevis and Mrs. Sharon Brantley. The Honorable Alexis Jeffers, Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Maritime Resources in the Government of St. Christopher and Nevis, and Deputy Premier Nevis. The Honorable Eric Rohan Evelyn, Minister of Environment and Cooperatives in the Government of St. Christopher and Nevis 
and Minister of Culture, Youth, Sports, and Community Development in the Nevis Island Administration. The Honorable Farrell Smitten, President of the Nevis Island Assembly. The Honorable Spencer R. Brand, Minister of Labor, Public Works, Water Services, Physical Planning, Posts, and the Environment, and Mrs. Brand. The Honorable Hazel M. Brandy Williams, Junior Minister in the Premier's Ministry with Responsibility for Health and Gender Affairs. The Honorable Troy Utant Liburd, Junior Minister in the Premier's Ministry with Responsibility for Education, Library Services, and Information Technology. Mrs. Helen Lewis, Legal Advisor. Lady Sheila Daniel, widow of National Hero, the right excellent Dr. Sir Sibian Daniel, JP, and Mr. Sean Henville, son of Lady Sheila Daniel. The Honorable Vance W. Amri, former minister, senior minister in the government of St. Christopher and Nevis, and former premier of Nevis. The Honorable oh, so I'm sorry. Your Honor, Miss Yasmin Clark, Magistrate. The Honorable Cleone Stapleton and Mr. The Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons and Mr. Simmons. Pastors government advisors, other senior government officials, family members of the dearly departed survivors. Good morning. Today marks a very significant day in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis. For it was on this day, the 1st of August, 1970, that the government owned and operated inter-island ferry, the MV Christina, set sail from, Bastia, from the Bastia Roadstead at some time before 4 p.m. with approximately 331 passengers on board and headed to Nevis. There are many theories as to what happened to the ferry on that day. Many such theories have never been confirmed, but what we do know is that the Envy Christina never made it to Nevis, as it capsized somewhere off of Nags Head and between 233 and 240 persons perished at sea on that ill-fated day. We have gathered here at this site since the year 2000 to commemorate the single largest maritime disaster in our history. But today's gathering is even more significant than any other gathering as today signals the 50th anniversary of the sinking of the MV Christina. So as we commemorate this milestone in our history, Permit me a few minutes of your time to share with you 10 bits of information that I was able to gather on the MV Christina and its final voyage between St. Kitts and Nevis. One, the vessel was built in British Guyana in 1959 at a cost of 132,500 West Indian dollars, West Indies dollars. It was a steel hull boat, the first of its kind in St. Kitts, 
nevis as all previous boats were wooden hulled boats. Two, oftentimes it has been said that the Envy Christina was a riverboat, and perhaps this was because the vessel was first floated on the Demerara River before setting sail to its first port of entry, which was Trinidad. It then left Trinidad on Thursday, the 4th of June, 1959, and arrived in St. Kitts on Sunday, June the 7th, 1959. Three, the vessel made a few trial runs between St. Kitts and Nevis, and on Monday, June 16, 1959, it commenced operations transporting passengers, cargo, and livestock between the two islands. Four, the vessel had a maximum capacity of 155 passengers. It accommodated 120 on the lower deck, 30 on the upper deck, and the cabin accommodated five passengers along with the captain. There were five crew members. Five. The fees for traveling to the boat were $1 for the upper deck, 50 cents for the lower deck, and 25 cents for children. The departure time from St. Kitts, number six, was 3.30 p.m. However, on that ill-fated day, having left Bastia, the boat returned to the pier several times to take on additional passengers who were traveling to Nevis to celebrate the August Monday weekend. As the boat finally set sail for Nevis, it was discovered that it was taken in water on the lower deck. So many persons moved from the lower deck to the upper deck. It is believed that the overcrowding of the upper deck is what eventually caused the Envy Christina to capsize at approximately 4.10 p.m. on that day. Seven, traveling from St. Kitts to Nevis on, that, on the boat that day was Lost Street resident, not too far from here, former police officer in the Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force, the very well-known Meredith Charles, and realizing what was about to happen, Meredith was the first passenger to jump overboard and was able to make it to shore. Number eight, of the approximately 233 to 240 passengers that perished at sea that day, Approximately 55 were from St. Kitts, and approximately 162 were from Nevis. There were 91 survivors. Nine, and I have to say this one from memory because it was given to me moments ago. We all know that where we are sitting right here before the Samuel Hungins Drive was constructed, it was water. And so the boys at Lost Street, either their backyards or their front yards, was almost in the sea. And so many of the boys at Lost Street could have swam. On the boat that day, we had, there were six Lost Street boys. And I can remember three of them that were given to me, Malcolm Gishad, Malcolm Simmons, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Clive Scarborough, now deceased. Copeland Roberts, now deceased. The same Meredith Charles that I just made mention to about, and there were two others whose name, names are eluding me right now. 
all, all six low street boys made it to shore. And that is because probably they were able, they, were, they learned to swim having been so close to the sea. Also from, New, from Low Street was one Earl Paris, who we now know as Pupil. Earl was a fisherman, and he was on a, they went fishing on a fishing mission to St. Kitts on that day, on a boat that was captained by one Mr. Wade. And Mr. Wade at that time, having seen the Christina, left the Bastille Roadstead, knew that his girlfriend and child was on the boat. And so he told Pupil, keep an eye on Christina. I have prized property on that boat. When they realized that the envy Christina was in danger and persons were moving from the lower deck to the upper deck, and the boat was somewhat leaning. The captain, Mr. Wade, reminded Pupil of his prized possession on the boat. And just as Meredith Charles jumped off of the boat, Pupil shouted, Pupil shouted, man overboard. And that is what set off the alarm on the Rehoboth boat that Pupil was on. And the other men on the Rehoboth boat, they jumped overboard and were able to take some of the first survivors onto their boat and brought them to shore. And finally, number 10, the Envy Christina served as the inter-island ferry for 11 years, one month, three weeks. So today, some 50 years on, the memory of the Christina disaster still lingers in our minds. Many families were adversely affected and have not been able to come to terms with their losses, not even up until today, some 50 years later. The Christina disaster has impacted the lives of many for the worst in some instances because of the hardship, the pain, the suffering that they all have had to endure over the past 50 years. It has influenced the social, political, and cultural landscape of our country. But out of this disaster, we have learned many lessons and have become a more resilient people. May the souls of the many that perish at sea that day rest in eternal peace. I thank you. We will now have the scripture reading by Miss Althea Esdell. We like to adopt the protocol that has been established. The prophet Jeremiah, writing in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 26 and 31 through 33, writes, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. 
The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve his children of men. This is the word of the Lord. been asked by the technical crew, the camera crew, to remove my mask. So hence the reason why I've, I've removed it. We will now invite Reverend Bonnie Byron to bring us the summonet. Reverend Byron. Greetings, everyone. August the 1st, 1970, is a day that is forever etched in my memory. On the afternoon of the Christina disaster, I was listening to a netball match on the radio, a match that was being played between St. Kitts and St. Lucia, I believe it was. The Senkitz team was losing very badly when the radio announcer interrupted the match, interrupted the broadcast to announce that the MV Christina had gone down in the middle of the channel between Senkitz and Nevis. My mother, Ayola Byron, dashed out of our kitchen. We were living in Pump Road just in that house up from where the fellas do their barbecue every Friday. You all know the place, right? Yes. She dashed out of the kitchen in shock to announce that my aunt Millicent Theodora Byron was on the ill-fated Christina. She promptly sent my older cousin Junie to get my dad, Rupert Byron, who was then working at Nevis Butler's company. Daddy arrived home in short order. We all quickly got dressed and headed for Charlestown. My parents left us children at my godfather Alma Nisbet's grocery in the middle of town while they headed for the pier for news of my Aunt Mill. They were gone for more than two or three hours, during which time I listened to horror story after horror story from folks coming in and out of the grocery that afternoon. People were passing in the street. There was weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Weeping for loved ones presumed dead and gone. It was like being in a dream, a horrible nightmare from which we would never wake up. When my mom and dad finally returned, they had no word about my Aunt Mel. Someone had seen her among those swimming for shore but that was the last that we ever heard about her. Two cousins who were near and dear to us, Doldre and Yulita Nolan of Mount Lily, were also missing. I will never forget the first words of the address of the Honorable Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw on that awful night. It is a black night for this state, he said. I am sure that everyone who was listening 
agreed with him in their hearts. I sure did. Later that evening, Daddy went to the hospital to perform the gruesome task with my uncles uh, Cecil and Vincent to perform the gruesome task of searching among the dead for their sister, my Aunt Millicent. He returned home nearly midnight with horror stories of persons he recognized among the dead. Some by that time had become unrecognizable. They returned the next day to perform the same task. They never found her. Hardly anyone slept in our house that night. And I am sure that was true for almost every home in Nevis. It is at times like these that persons ask rhetorical questions. Why did God allow this awful tragedy to happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? Where was God when we needed him most? Situations like this, my friends, either test our faith or make it stronger. I certainly do not have answers to these questions. Life is full of tragedies that one cannot explain. There is, however, one thing I know for sure. In times of tragedy, my God walks with us. He is with us in the good times. He is with us in the sad times. He has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Jesus Christ understands our sufferings. For he suffered for us on the cross of Calvary centuries of years ago. My recollection of those days after the disaster was that for once in our lives, we forgot our political differences. We forgot whatever uh, divisions existed among us and everybody came together as one. Everyone lost someone on the Christina that day. Whether it was a blood relative, a loved one, or a friend, we all wept and mourned together. If there was any good that came out of that awful tragedy, it was that we all came together in our grief as we tried to comfort and help one another. Fifty years have come and gone, my friends. But for me, it still seems like yesterday that I was in my godfather, Alman Nisbet's grocery on the afternoon of the Christina disaster for two or three of the longest hours in my lifetime. It is a time that I will never forget. My friends, time does heal wounds. But I trust that the memory of this sad time in our history will help to bring us together once more as a people. As we come to grips with what should really matter in this life, what should be top priority in life, love for God, love for one's neighbor, and love for self. Yesterday, someone sent me a photo in my WhatsApp and it was one of the most powerful photos I have seen in a long time. It was a photo of some of our past and present leaders. Our Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris. Our Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley. Our only living national hero, the Honorable Dr. the Honorable Kennedy Simmons. Former Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Denzel Douglas. Former Premier, the Honorable Vance Amory. Former Premier, the Honorable Joseph Parry. Standing together 
shoulder to shoulder, side by side. I hope I did not leave out anyone. For me, it was a glorious symbol of unity, a symbol of togetherness, a symbol of reconciliation, a symbol of love. It is a photo that I will cherish forever. I am sure that I speak for many persons when I say that we would love to see this more often in our federation. Political and spiritual leaders coming together in solidarity, coming together as one, standing shoulder to shoulder, side by side, for the good of our federation, for the development and betterment of this federation that we love so, so much. It is good to see this in times of tragedy, but it would even be better to see this more often. In St. John's Gospel, chapter 17 and verse 11, we read these words, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. Jesus prayed for unity among his disciples. Today, Jesus still prays for us, brothers and sisters, that there will be unity, love, reconciliation, peace and harmony among us not only in times of tragedy, but at all times. One of my favorite choruses, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Jesus prays that we will pray together and learn to live and work together in love and peace and harmony. When the problems of life seek to confuse us and overwhelm us, when there seems to be no answer to life's perplexing difficulties as there was on that awful day of the Christina disaster, my friends, we should always seek God first for guidance and direction. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I pray that even 50 years after, the souls of all who perished in that, on that day will continue to rest in eternal and everlasting peace. I pray that God will continue to comfort the survivors the loved ones of those who perished. And I pray that God will bless us all and that God will continue to bless our beautiful federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, now and forevermore. In the name of God the Father, our Creator, God the Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, God the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Amen and Amen. We will now have a special rendition, but I think it is imperative of me that I let you know how this song came about. The performer, she is a blues, jazz, and gospel singer with ancestral roots in Rollins Village, Gingerland. Now she has performed at the three blues festivals that we have had here on Nevis at Wally Beach. And she has also performed for 
Pope John Paul II and also for Queen Elizabeth 50th Jubilee celebration. The performer unfortunately and probably fortunately got trapped here on Nevis when our borders closed. And uh, being here for such a long time, she decided that she would record an album and so she cre she contacted legendary musician Jazik Shiverton of Balacorn Recording Studio and while working on the album the idea of a Christina song came up the rest is history let us now welcome to perform for you Miss Denise Gordon. Thank you, thank you. What an intro. Thank you for the invitation to join you this afternoon. It's, it's an honor to share this song, and um, we just hope it brings comfort to you all in memory of our nation's great loss, Christine. To all of our loved ones, we remember you On that fateful day in 1970 The first day of August, beautiful Saturday People gathered excitedly Remembering our victory Emancipation celebration Brought our victory But who knew when they left that day They were never coming back this way That's why we cherish every day To all of our loved ones We seem to remember Cherish your memories Forever and ever Christina, Christina Sons and our daughters by the still waters, we remember you. Time is short, life is so precious. Straight from the heart, you're missed by all of us. The stars up in the sky remind us that you're waiting there. You're resting in. Of God, by grace, we'll meet you there. Your light shines through in space and time, guides our footsteps down the line. Your love's a tide that binds to a world of our loved ones. We sing to remember, cherish your memories forever and ever. Christina, Christina. Our sons and our daughters by the still waters, we remember you. Oh, mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers, so many gone, but you never forgotten. Ooh, a song for you. This one is for the teachers, preachers, nurses, and doctors, and for the courage of the brave survivors, too. Sing to remember and cherish your memory forever and ever. Christina, Christina, sons and our daughters, by the still waters, we remember you. We sing, sail on, we remember, shine on. We never forget ya, say long. We remember, we remember, we remember you, say long. We remember, shine on, never forget ya, say long. We remember. 
remember, say we remember, we remember, say Lord, we remember, shine on, never forget you, say Lord, say we remember you. God bless you. Another round of applause for a proud Gingerlander, Denise Gordon. And I see Mr. Amri shaking his head when I said proud Gingerlander. We are all Rollins um, persons. And I'm sure you would understand why she was invited to perform for Pope John Paul II and Queen Elizabeth. Thank you, Denise. I would now ask you to focus your attention as, no, it's the order, sorry. We now have an audio presentation recognizing the survivors and those survivors that are present. We are asking you to come forward as we have something special that we'll be, we will be pinning on you. And so the names of the survivors will be played over the PA system and the survivors who are present, we're asking you to come forward to have something pinned on you. Okay, we are experiencing, experiencing some technical difficulties with the audio. And so now we are going to go to a video presentation with the reading of the names of the daily departed. And once we have the audio sorted out, we'll come back and you'll hear the names of the survivors being played.
Ezekiel Allen St. Kitts, Miriam Allen Nevis, Shirley Allen Nevis, Floretta Archibald Nevis, Samuel Archibald Nevis, Amy Atherton Nevis, Bertrand Atherton Nevis, Emily Atherton Nevis, Rodney Atherton Nevis, Valentine Ordain St. Kitts, Errol Bartlett Nevis, Francil Bartlett Nevis, Ellen Bazzi Nevis, Mavis Bazzi Nevis, Austin Bell St. Kitts, Franklin Bell St. Kitts, Sherwin Bertie St. Kitts, Adolphus Blois St. Kitts, Harold Brown Nevis, and my dear departed mother, Josephine Brown Nevis. Monroe Brown Nevis. Muriel Brown, my sister, Nevis. Olga Brown Nevis. Robert Brown, St. Kitts. Gwendolyn Bodgen Nevis. Lillian Busu Nevis. Welsine Busu Nevis. Millicent Byron, St. Kitts. Alan Cable, St. Kitts. Awilda Carr, St. Kitts. Sharon Chapman Nevis, Clementina Charles Nevis, Anita Clark Nevis, Brenda Clark Nevis, Euphina Clark Nevis, Leslie Clark Nevis, Sarah Clark Nevis, Delia Claxton Nevis, James Claxton Nevis, Fernan Claxton Nevis. Sister Amelia Como, St. Kitts, Anthony Condell, Nevis, Christine Condell, Nevis, Irene Condell, Nevis, Loretta Cornelius, Nevis, Leontine Daniel, St. Kitts, Carl David, St. Kitts, Christina David, St. Kitts, Joseph David, St. Kitts, Leon David St. Kitts, Mavis David St. Kitts, Verna David St. Kitts, Laniel Davis Nevis, Sister Patricia Dineen St. Kitts, and my grandmother Claristine Doe Nevis. Jessica Doe Nevis, Myra Doe Nevis, Amelia Duport Nevis, Wendell Duport Nevis. James Elliot Nevis, my father, Kennedy Elliot Nevis, my brother, Alberta Esdale Nevis, Florence Esdale Nevis, Zenith Farrell Sinkitz, Alberta Ferguson Nevis, Emil Ferguson Nevis, Cloviat H. France Sinkitz, Moses Frank Nevis, Augusta Freeman Nevis, Tama Freeman Nevis, Daniel French Sinkitz, Clarence Forbes Sinkitz, Emily Forbes Nevis, James Glassford Nevis, Lorraine Griffin Nevis, Melvina Gums Sinkitz, Lillian Halliday Nevis, Bertram Hanley Sinkitz, Conrad Hanley Nevis, Eglantine Hanley Nevis, Hugh Hanley Nevis, Melford Hanley Nevis, Rose Hanley Nevis, Rosetta Zena Hanley Nevis, Marilyn Hendrickson Nevis, Rosalind Henry St. Kitts, Maxwell King Herbert Nevis, Alice Huggins Nevis, Nelson Leroy Huggins Nevis, Samuel Huggins Francis Hutton Nevis, Bethia Hill Nevis, Marilyn Myrna Hobson Nevis, Emily Holland USA, James Irvine Sinkitz, Esther James Nevis, Vernon James Sinkitz, Clifford Jeffers Nevis, Dwight Jeffers Nevis, Marina Jeffers 
Nevis, Ralph Jeffers, Nevis, Rosalie Agatha Jeffers, Nevis, Clothilda Johnson, Nevis, Michael Johnson, Nevis, Edith Jones, Nevis, Emily Jones, Nevis, Iris Jones, Nevis, my mother. Olga Jones, Aretha Jones, Nevis, Vida Jones, Nevis, Carmen Joseph, Nevis, Louisa Joseph, St. Kitts, Sheila Joseph, St. Kitts, Vinetta Joseph, St. Kitts, Vernon Joseph, Avril Cynthia Kelly, Nevis, Eugene Kelly, Nevis, Vernalands, St. Kitts, Dawn Lawrence, Sister Marie LeBlanc, St. Kitts, Calvin Lewis, Nevis, Castro Liburd, Nevis, Edric Paul Liburd, St. Kitts, Elvira Liburd, Nevis, Emerson Liburd, Nevis, Beryl Liburd, my sister, Nevis, Evelyn Patricia Liburd, my sister, Nevis, Iris Liburd, Nevis, James Liburd, Kirsten Olivia Liburd, St. Kitts, Kirtley Liburd Nevis, Lillian Liburd Nevis, Louisa Liburd Nevis, Marianne Liburd Nevis, Marianne Liburd Nevis, Mildred Liburd, Thomas Liburd Nevis, Samuel Liburd Nevis, Eva Marson St. Kitts, Maud Lucilla Martino St. Kitts, Cheryl Martino St. Kitts, Leroy Masters Nevis, Charles Maynard St. Kitts, Sadie Maynard Nevis, Linda McKilkin Nevis, Aditha Michael St. Kitts, Henetta Mills Nevis, Maud Mills Nevis, Vivian Mills Nevis, Ursula Morris St. Kitts, Calvin Morton Nevis, Clarice Morton Nevis, Inez Morton Nevis, Irma Morton Nevis, Orville Morton Nevis, Pearl Morton Nevis, Rose Morton, Annie Natter St. Kitts, Gervon Nisbet Nevis, Herbert Nisbet Nevis, Lillian Nisbet Nevis, Tony Nisbet St. Kitts, Daldria Nolan St. Kitts, Yolita Nolan St. Kitts, Tessa Nolan St. Kitts, Florence Paris Nevis, and my dear mother, Hannah Paris Nevis. Calvin Pemberton, Nevis. Helen Pemberton, Nevis. Rufus Pemberton, Nevis, my father. Birdie Phillips, United Kingdom. Conrad Phillips, St. Kitts. James Pontine, St. Kitts. George Powell, Nevis. Marion Powell, Nevis. Miriam Powell, Nevis. Cheryl Powell, Nevis. Yvette Powell, Nevis. Evanston Prentice, Nevis. Anthony Prince, St. Kitts. Austin Reed, Nevis. Asinet Richards, Nevis. Ivan Richardson, Nevis. Joseph Richards, Nevis. Leroy Rouse, St. Kitts. Vernarine Sadler, Nevis. Alicia Scarborough, Nevis. Dwayne Scarborough, Nevis. Inez Scarborough, Nevis. Edward Smith, Nevis. Calvin Smithen. Christina Smithen, Nevis. Ivan Smithen, St. Kitts. And Keith Springett, Nevis. Vivian Stanley, Nevis. Yvonne Stapleton, Nevis. Stanley Sutton, Nevis, Daryl Swanston, Nevis, David Swanston, Nevis, Hanshel Swanston, Nevis, Theodosia Swanston, Nevis, Samuel Sweeney, St. Kitts, Marilyn Thompson, Nevis, my uncle, Alston Truss, Nevis, and my aunt, Marilyn Truss, Nevis. Alton Trotman, Nevis. Iris Chutman Nevis, Irvin Chutman Nevis, 
Dave Tyson Nevis, Kristen Tyson Nevis, Theodosia Tyson Nevis, Yvette Wade Nevis, Candy Wallace Senkitz, Lorna Wallace Senkitz, Judith Walters Nevis, Virginia Walters Senkitz, Wentworth Parks Walwyn Nevis, Violet Watley, my mother, Nevis. Felstein Watts Nevis, Adina Webb Nevis, Avenel Weeks Senkitz, Benjamin Weeks Nevis, Elroy Weeks Senkitz, Elroy Vernon Weeks Nevis, my brother, Louisa Weeks Senkitz, Louisa Weeks Nevis, Marion Weeks, Nicholas Weeks Nevis, Rita Weeks Senkitz, Amelia Wheeler Nevis, George Williams Nevis, Cutley Williams Nevis, Vernon Williams Nevis. Audio, and so we'll have the audio reading or announcement of the survivors. List of survivors. Reuben Allen, Carlton Arisbeth, Joseph Bartlett, Vincent Benjamin, Robert Blake, Michael Brisbane, Ivor Brooks, Arrington Brown, Clifford Brown, Dulcita Brown, Edna Brown, Franklin Brown, Leonard Brown, Roger Brown, Joseph Budgen, Luella Budgen, Tom Carlton, Livingston Chapman, Meredith Charles, Edward Clark, Wilson Condell, Everson Davis, William Denning, William Depussoir, Terence Duzan, Lionel Edwards, Ivan Elliott, Bertram Foster, James France, Rudolph Francis, Samuel Freeman, Eustace Hanney, Vincent Harris, Ronald Hendrickson, Alice Herbert, Robert Hines, Fitzroy Huggins, Philip Huggins, Jonathan James, Leroy James, Belinda Jeffers, Charles Johnson, Llewellyn Johnson, Edmund Kelly, Ian Kelsick, Samuel Lake, Devon Liburd, Edwin Liburd, Joseph Martin Sinkitz, Joseph Martin Nevis, Julie Martin, Samuel Mason, Frank Matthews, Edward Merchant, Charles Moore, Franklin Morton, Vincent Morton, Chernell Mulrain, Carlton Nisbet, Gerard Prentice, Conrad Prokop, Clive Rollins, Eust Richards, Alice Richardson, Wendell Richardson, Copeland Roberts, Joseph Robertson, Leroy Sage, Lofton Sargent, Livingston Sargent, Clive Scarborough, Malcolm Simmons, Victor Simmons, Vincent Stapleton, Earl Storad, Victor Swanston, Grenville Trust, Livingston Trotman, Oswald Tyson, Herman Udenberg, St. Clair Wallowin, Job Ward, Cecil Warner, James Weeks, James Wenham, Wendell Wilkinson, Diana Williams, Leroy Williams, Aubrey 
Wilson. Louis Solis Wilson. And, uh, the MV Christina left Bastia in St. Kitts on his customary afternoon trip to the island of Nevis. One hour later, the ferry laid on the sea floor just off Nags Head. More than 300 passengers were either struggling for their lives in the calm water or... and not listed in the booklet we have charles spin chapman he's right over there to my left a survivor okay and we will now stand and observe a minute's silence in honor of those that perished at sea on August the 1st, 1970. Thank you. You may be seated. Next, we will have the laying of wreaths on the memorial that is right behind of me. We'll have it done in this order. Her Honor, Mrs. Hylita Leibard, O-B-E-M-H. Then we will have Justice Ermin Mossi, Moist, Moist. Honorable Premier Mark Brantley. President of the Nevis Island Assembly, Honorable Farrell Smitten. And uh, we'll have the Honorable Member of the Opposition, Mrs. Cleon Simmons. So we'll have them in that order, please.
Okay, we will now have a video tribute by family members. The MV Christina left Bastia in St. Kitts on his customary afternoon trip to the island of Nevis. One hour later, the ferry laid on the sea floor just off Nags Head. More than 300 passengers were either struggling for their lives in the calm water or had already lost their fight. Over 230 persons perished in that tragedy. Fifty years on, family members still mourn their loss and some have shared with us memories of their dearly departed. August 1st, 1970 is forever embedded in our minds. I remember when my aunt who lived next door called out to my mom and said, they just say the Christina sing. My mom who was looking forward to greeting her husband and eldest son could not believe it. I can still hear the blood chilling scream my mother made as she walked out to Main Road. Our lives as we knew it changed drastically. We remember our father Rufus Pemberton and our brother Elroy reads with memories that lives in our hearts. Fifty years and it still feels like yesterday. Our family, like so many others, was plunged into sudden unexpected mourning, struggling to comprehend that our sister Marilyn and brother Alston, Roy, had been snatched away forever by a calm sea that swallowed the MV Christina. It happened on our mother's 42nd birthday. A day of celebration had been shattered into one of unimaginable grief. She never celebrated on that day again. The commemoration of this tragedy has surfaced a range of emotions. The grief still feels fresh. Cruelly robbed of a chance to say goodbye, the emptiness of loss has never gone away. Yet we cherish the memories. Both were devoted to family. Marilyn loved being a teacher. Roy, about to start his final year of high school, had an ear for languages. Today, we pay tribute to their memory joining in solidarity with the survivors and those who lost loved ones and salute the resilience of our people. May the souls of our sister, brother, aunts and cousins continue to rest in eternal peace. We will not forget. The memories of that day are still fresh 50 years later. The sleepy wake-up call, dressing in the early morning light, shushing your sister back to sleep, the borrowed shoes and the I love you kiss. It is still hard to fathom why you. Less than two weeks before your 17th birthday, waiting with trepidation for your GCE O levels results from London, but still planning to celebrate the end of CSS and the start of something new and exciting. You left without warning. The firstborn of your parents on the cusp of womanhood, so full of promise, cut short by the treacherous sea on that fateful Saturday. We honor the woman that you were on your way to becoming. We honor your mysterious smile reserved for your special friends. We honor the way you fought our big brother on our behalf. We honor your willingness to humor the younger ones, patiently playing marbles and shouting Bible verses as we compete to find them first. Your loss remains as deep and as painful as that moment when dad came back, red-eyed and sad on the final day without your body, after searching among the ones lucky enough to wash ashore. 
But we didn't give up hope until you came back in mom's dream in that white dress bathing light to say, I am okay. We know you are in heaven, our angel, watching over us with the other ancestors with love. In remembering my sweet sister Yvette Wade, she loved to entertain and she would make the yummiest pineapple upside down cake. My cherished memory of my sister Yvette was that she was vivacious and full of life. Yvette was well loved by her family and her peers. My memory of Yvette is that she was very friendly and had lots of friends in high school. I remember Yvette's uh, sweet smile and how beautiful she was and that I wanted to go with her to St. Kitts. Yes, and I remember Yvette as being very loving. Anytime I get sick, she would willingly and lovingly take care of me. I love you, Yvette. I miss Yvette so much. I can't believe it's 50 years since this terrible tragedy. I love you, Yvette. grandmother, Vivian Stanley. She sadly perished in the devastating Christina tragedy. In the years since that fateful day, I have missed her more and more. On August the 1st, 1970, I was just four years old and growing up in England after my father, Modred Stanley, like so many others, had answered the call to rebuild post-war Britain. The thing I missed out on the most was that I never had the chance to put my arms around her and tell her that I loved her. I've visited Nevis a number of times and had the good fortune to attend a memorial service last year, which gave me the chance to pay my respects to not only my grandmother Vivian, but all those good souls that passed that day. This is my family, and they share my sorrow, but they also share my hope that she has taken her seat in heaven and guides and protects us all from on high. My father has now joined her, and they are reunited after having been apart for so many years. May our loved ones continue to rest in peace and may we remember them with love in our hearts. This tribute is dedicated to Iris and Alton Trotman. If tears could build a stairway and memories were a lane, we would walk right up to heaven and bring you back again. No farewell words were spoken, no time to say goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only God knows why. Our hearts still ache in sadness, and secret tears still flow. What it meant to lose you, no one will ever know. But know we know you want us to mourn for you no more, to remember all the happy times life still has much in store. Since you'll never be forgotten, we pledge to you today. A hollow place within our heart is where you'll always stay. This tribute is from all of your kids, and grandkids and great grandkids. We pray that you continue to rest in eternal peace. We love you and we miss you. Bye. Hello, my name is
name is Calvin Paris. I bring you greetings from the surviving children and families of Hannah Elizabeth Paris, one of the many who perished in the Christina disaster on August 1st, 1970. On behalf of my siblings, Reverend Achmiel Daly, Samuel Paris, Jasmine Paris, Alfred Romeo Paris, Steve Paris, Lavin Paris Ryan, and Thelma Paris Mills, I am happy to say, though life has had its many ups and downs, uh, twists and turns, suffered many hardships as motherless children, yet we honor the sovereignty of God, for in his infinite wisdom, he charted the course of our lives. A huge thank you to God and to the families that took us in and cared for us as their very own. The Dailies of Charlestown, the Maynards of Craddock Road, the Douglases of St. Kitts, just to name a few. Because of you and the help of God, we are still standing today unbroken. So, in all things we give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning us. Thank you, and God bless you. In loving memory of our sister, Tessa Angela Nolan, who sadly lost her life in this disaster at the age of seven years old. Her loss broke the hearts of her parents, Ernestine and Absalom Nolan. She is with God and he is keeping her safe until Jesus comes and God continues to comfort us at this time. Consuela Doe, affectionately known as Consi, was the second child of the late Mrs. Dulcina Liburd Nidoe. Myra was born on the 10th of Gingerland Senior School, she received the school leaving certificate as well as College of Preceptor certificate. On August 1st, 1970, she had been returning from St. Kitts where she had gone to finalize accommodation in light of her acceptance to teachers' training. Marjorie Liburd Brandy, Jean and Jeffrey Liburd will forever treasure our memories of her. Rest in peace, our dear sister. Dolgia Nolan was 20 years when she died during the Christina disaster. She was born at Mount Lily Village. She was the fifth child of Eulalie and Jonathan Nolan, and sister of Orville Nolan, Carmen Christopher, Linnell Nolan, Hyacinth Nolan, and Marigold Harper. She attended the Combermere All Age Elementary School, the Charleston High School, and the St. Kitts Grammar School. Dalgier was subsequently employed by the Bank of America in Bastille, St. Kitts, up to the time of her death.
Yolita Nolan was 19 years when she died during the Christina disaster. She was born at Mount Lily Village. She was the sixth child of Eulalie and Jonathan Nolan, and sister of Orville Nolan, Carmen Christopher, Linnell Nolan, Hyacinth Nolan, and Marigold Harper. She attended the Condomere All Age Elementary School and subsequently enrolled as a student nurse at the JN France Hospital in Bastia St. Kitts up to the time of her death. Both Dolgia and Yolita, whose bodies were never identified, departed life too soon and are sadly missed. May their souls continue to rest in peace. Hi, I'm Dr. Ermine Brown Leader, now residing in Canada. And as we celebrate on August 1, 2020, the 50th anniversary of the sinking of the MV Christina, I reflect on that being the saddest day of my life because my mom, Josephine Nation Daniel Ellett Brown, at age 33 was one of the over 200 victims on that boat. But looking back, I am filled with gratitude that God put family in our life, George Lillian Brown, Mrs. Eddings, who actually took over mothering me, and all those who helped out Laurel, Will, Jimmy, Jennifer, as we, we went along. And as we, as we mark the anniversary this year, my prayer is that all of us who remain will honor those who, who perished by continuing to teach the pro-social, spiritual, and other values that will make our societies in St. Kitts better places to live. Okay, I will now invite you to stand as we sing the hymn, We Have an Anchor. And during the singing of this hymn, there are some family members and others who have wreaths that they would like to lay. And so we're asking them to do this during the singing of the hymn. We Have an Anchor. an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fasten to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love it is safely loosed will the storm withstand for to his well secured by the sea Pass from the heart of life can defy that blast through strength defied. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Surely fall in the streets of fear when the breakers have to the deep which blow to the tempest rage and the wild wind blow. Not an angry wave shall impart or flow. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the people. Fasten to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Firmly hold in the floods of death when the waters fall, surely death will but the rising tide which can never fail. 
have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move in the sea. can remain standing while I invite Pastor Denzel Roberts to bring us the closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne at this time and we know, dear God, that it is very easy for us to adhere to the commands of, of David. When David said we must give thanks. Your Father, you know it would take us another 50 years. Should we even start to give you reasons why we ought to say to you thanks? But it becomes more challenging when the Apostle Paul tells us that we must give thanks for everything. How can one give thanks for a disaster of such magnitude. But the Father, of course, equally so, there are many reasons why we can give you thanks for such. Because, dear God, we know that those who we heard survived the tragedy and who are still alive today, because some have since passed on, we know it was a sense of hopelessness, a sense, dear God, where they, no doubt, might have been saying, why is it that I didn't perish with my mother, with my father, because what is going to happen to us now? Because so many of them were very little then, now in their 60s, etc. But the father, having survived such a tragedy, then it helps us to be able to understand more and more the wisdom in the songwriter when he says, Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. It helps the Father to better understand what Zechariah meant when he said, It's not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. And the Father, even those who have survived, and we hear of the names of those who perished, I pray, Lord, that they also be greatly humbled, that they recognize that their names also could have been enlisted in such a tragedy. And the Father, they'll also realize that there were also many great swimmers who perished. And so it's because of you, dear God, why they're able to be with us today. Dear Father, who knows? Those persons who were not here then and come and see the island today, they would not believe the tragedy. But the Father, you've helped us. And because of the song, the reality of the song we just sang, of that anchor, which helps us to be remain firm and secure. I trust, dear Father, that we continue to realize the significance of the importance of us looking out for each other. Thank you for the neighbors, the aunts, the uncles, the godparents, the well-wishers, those who step forward and enable their father, those young ones, to be able to be here today and help them and rally around them. And I trust their God that even as we experience the COVID situation right now, that we continue to understand that if we prevail, 
if we succeeded, if we triumphed over the Christina disaster, then dear God, the same God who helped us then is more than able to help us at this time. Help us to continue to trust in you and depend upon you. And as we heard the preacher said, seeing the politicians and everyone getting together, I trust, dear God, that you will not take another disaster for us to be able to understand the significance of us. Not just having a political party named Unity, but for us to really and truly be united. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and uh, we will now have the departure of her honor, Deputy Governor General and uh, Mr. Leibard. by the departure of the Honorable Premier of the government officials. And will of the departure of the Honorable. 